What up, what up? Welcome to episode one of the Fantasy Football Network's Launch League. I'm JV, this is Jeff, and for episode one, we are talking to the man himself. Now, Jeff, we're going to hop right into things because on that live stream, there were a lot of critics about the so-called Javonta 5 now, but it seems... It seems like you're a little bit more confident than, I mean, maybe pro football crazy Zach is in your team this season. Looking at your team, Josh Allen with the first overall pick. Then you had Javonta Williams, Damian Pierce, Amari Cooper, Allen Lazard, Kittle, DJ Chark, Julio Jones is your starting lineup. We'll come over the bench later on, but just take me through your draft. How happy are you with the team you drafted and what are you looking forward to this season? Well, JV, first of all, like you said, I'm number one on here, and I think I'm going to be number one in the league when all this is said and done. I've got a solid team, man. Um, you know, I this is the first time I've ever drafted a quarterback in the first round. And a lot of people were wondering why. A lot of the top receivers were already taken. You know, this is a 14-team league. So a lot of the top receivers were taken. A lot of the top running backs that I thought were the top running backs were taken. So Josh Allen is on pace to outdo what he did last year. I believe he had high 40s in the uh, or low 40s touchdown uh, last year. I think it's possible that this dude could put up 50 touchdowns, 45 passing, you know, maybe another five or six running. Uh, That offense, he is the leader in the most potent offense, I believe now in the NFL. So if he does what he did, uh, leaving off in that uh, in the playoffs, man, if he starts off like that and they start off hot, uh, I think I'm going to be looking pretty well. As long as he's putting up big points, I think it will uh, cover up some other holes I might have, as people might say that I have in my lineups. But I'm I'm confident, you know, uh, (laughs) with the guys that I got. That's what we like to hear. Yeah, some there were definitely a lot of people, but now we come back and look at Jeff. How bittersweet is that Marlon Mack release? And now Damian Pierce filling in that RB2 role on your team. You're kind of looking like a genius now. You got it. That's foresight. That's what we call that. Foresight. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. I don't listen to other analysts. I don't listen to guys, you know, uh, that throw up these, uh, oh, you got to get this guy and get, I actually watch, preseason is important to me, man. I watch games. I watch what coaches do. I watch what players do. I don't just go by the name that's hot. That's what guys don't understand. I've been playing this long enough. Watching Damian Pierce reminds me of watching Matt Forte back when Lovey Smith coached the Bears. I, I've said this on other shows, man. Lovey Smith likes to run the ball. Marlon Mack is a good back, but he's not starting material in this league right now. And and that's what I looked at. The guys that he has behind him, Rex Burkhead and Royce Freeman, who they actually waived today. I'm like, man, if Marlon Mack is not the starter, and then, matter of fact, getting waived, you're looking at this guy being the large piece in the backfield. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing. Everybody else that was left in the running back position, they were by committee. So I was I was very, very uh, – uh, I, I kind of had a feeling that Damian mm-hmm. Pierce was not going to be into, in a committee. I go for a guy that's pretty much the uh, one through third down back, uh, you know, as he's going to get a lot of volumes of carries. That's what – Damian Pierce is going to be, I believe, uh, mm-hmm. basically because of his coach and their line does not look bad. A lot of people are looking uh, kind of down on the Texans. I think they might, you know, I'm not saying they're going to be great. They're not going to win the uh, the AFC South, but I think they're going to be a little yeah. bit more competitive than guys are thinking right now. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of Jeff playing fantasy for a while, you see the gray hairs popping out, but do not. Do not. <laughs> Do not take that for granted. He, he is the elder in this league. You respect your elders. He sniffed out, out Damian. This was, again, pre-Marlon Mack release. So the price was right for Damian Pierce. Scooped him up. The running back core 
is looking solid. Now we're going to transition over to your bench. Mike Davis, Kenneth Walker, Brian Robinson, Isaiah Pacheco, Marvin Jones, Romeo Dubes, and Jameson Williams in the newly and improved IR spot, which we got added courtesy of myself after a few weeks of banter. Who are you most <laughs> excited? <laughs> Who are you most excited about on your bench? Because there's a lot of young talent that you got on there. Well, man, that's what it was. I was kind of ahead of the curve with Damian Pierce, and I would have really looked way ahead of the curve if the unfortunate circumstances had not fallen upon Brian Robinson, because that's what mm -hmm. I was looking at. I was like, this guy is going to be the starter in Washington. And again, another running team uh, with a guy that I believe is going to get was going to get a lot of goal line carries, uh, was going to be probably, again, a, a heavy volume type back in that Washington uh, offense. So, you know, if if he if it was not for that unfortunate uh, shooting, I think that would have been another mm -hmm. one I really uh, kind of scored on. So I'm holding on to him, though, seeing what happens, hoping that he's well first, just yeah. physically, you know, and then – hoping that he's able to come back and, and still uh, produce uh, this, this season. But yeah, love him. Yeah. Love yeah. Him. Definitely. I'm a, Go ahead. He, no, no. I mean, I was just going to touch on Brian Robinson. Definitely an unfortunate uh, an incident that happened there because he was about to walk into a RB one role with, Antonio Gibson on special teams right now. <laughs> so Brian Robinson, if he can return healthy, if all goes well, prayers up, he could seriously slot into an RB1 role in Commanders, which would be huge for your team as I would assume a flex play. Yes, yes, definitely. And then that's the same thing with uh, Kenneth Walker being a Seahawks fan, mm -hmm. you know, um, been waiting for Rashad Penny to do something for years, and I'm I'm hoping you know, not wishing anybody to get hurt or anything, but I just know that he is very injury prone, and I know that Pete Carroll likes to ride the hot hand. So if Penny does miss mm -hmm. some time for whatever reason, whether it's a hamstring or whatever, even if it's just a game, and Kenneth Walker gets in there and produces, I think he becomes the RB one, which he eventually is going to be anyway in that system mm -hmm. so again you know we're looking at uh solid running backs that get heavy volume uh when they are in that rb1 spot and that's basically what i look for a lot you know didn't know what was going to happen with alvin kamara that was the only reason why i didn't take him aaron jones you know who I'm, i actually have in some other leagues i'm still that was right when the news was coming out about him and uh, aj Dillon possibly splitting 50-50, and knowing that A.J. Dillon's going to be used around the goal line probably a little bit more than Aaron Jones, you know, I go for guys that they're going to uh, be the guy that's getting the, the handoffs, and then especially around the goal line, they're not really giving uh, too much up. And that was probably what people are looking at with Javante Williams. Uh, I believe that Melvin Gordon will get some playing time, uh, but I do not believe he's going to be you know, the goal line vulture that he was last year uh, with Javante. Right, yeah. I mean, touching back on Aaron Jones and Alvin Kamara, I picked both of them up on the turn after Jeff. So Indeed. I can't complain. I, <laughs> I like both those running backs. I don't know if Jeff has mixed feelings about me right now and after that draft, but uh, I can't complain. But let's touch on Jeff's receivers now. Jeff. There's a lot of boom-bust potential in your receiving yep. room on this roster here. We have Amari Cooper, new face in Cleveland. We have Alan Lazard, a new face to a wide receiver, one role in Green Bay. And Julio Jones, a new face in Tampa Bay. What are your expectations for those three wide receivers this season? And what should drafters expect for them production-wise, in your opinion, heading into the 2022 season? Again, you have a lot of people that go for the names and they like to look at, you know, the production from last year. 
All of these guys are with new squads, basically. Amari Cooper's got a new quarterback throwing to him that's not Deshaun Watson, but there are no other receivers on that team to challenge him. And that's what people, he was brought yep. there to be their number one receiver. <laughs> so even though they're a run heavy offense, um, you know, you got to remember that's the same uh, coach that came from uh, Justin Jefferson's rookie year. So they, he's still prone mm-hmm. to throw the ball. And Amari Cooper is going to be that guy. Um, there's, there's basically nobody else, maybe David uh, Njoku, uh, but that's, you know, uh, probably about 5% of the target share. Um, right. David Bell, who's a rookie, you don't know what you're going to get out of him. Cooper is going to, and he's another guy that's used to facing double teams. So I, I just, I went for the volume on that one. He was the last of the true number one receivers left. And that's what you're going to need to go with. Um, I would rather go ahead and take a guy that is the number one uh, rather than a mm-hmm. middle of the pack uh, wide receiver two on a team that has a higher passing volume. So that was the first thing that's one I'm excited about. And especially after Tom Brady made mm. the quote that Hall of Famers are easy to connect with. Yes. I remember Tom Brady <laughs> and Randy Moss. I'm looking at that. Ooh, same, same. This is a throwback now. This, this is, is a throwback. People who are looking at last year, what he looked like with the Titans. The Titans aren't a throwing team. Very true. You, look at, you're com- you want to compare Ryan Tannehill to who many consider the GOAT? Come on, man. And now yep. you got Mike Evans on the other side? Man, you're kidding me right now. That's going to be <laughs> all day, as you saw in that last uh, preseason game, man. I, I, I think – Julio Jones is going to remain healthy this year. Whatever Tom is doing, I think he's going to go ahead and rub a little bit of that off on Julio Jones. So if I can get him way down like where I did, man, I'll go ahead and take that and think that he could be a high-end wide receiver too. I'll tell you what, Tom's going to give some vitamins to Julio that he's been taking. He's a geezer. We're talking 46 years old. And he's the number one ranked on the NFL Top 100. Julio's going to take some of those vitamins, a few B vitamins, a few C vitamins. He'll be good to go for the entire season. Exactly. Avocado <laughs> ice cream, all of the above, man. All of the above, Tom's going to be giving it to him, man. So, awesome. And uh, then if you notice what I did with Green Bay, which is a, Ooh. I think is going to be a, still a higher passing offense, I tried to corner the market. <laughs> I tried to, you know, go ahead and pick Lazard. If it's not if Lazard's not going to be the guy, I'm going to go ahead and try to roll with uh, my man Dobbs. So, yep. you know, one of those guys has to do something. Uh, if not, you know, I'll, I'll throw somebody else uh, in there. And that's why I went ahead and picked up Marvin Jones, who I think is going to be still a high-end wide receiver, too, with the Jags. So... Hey, if it's not Alan Lazard, if it's not Romeo Dobbs, it's Randall Cobb. And I'm telling you one thing right now, it's not going to be Randall Cobb. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Alan Lazard this year. So, you know, I don't think you can go wrong with that pick, especially at his ADP right now. Jeff, we'll wrap things up right now. I notice you don't have a kicker in the lineup right now. Are you that confident in your roster that you're going to take week one's matchup home without a kicker? I am. And I've watched my competitor, Zach, do the same thing. So if he's like, all right, I'm not going to use a kicker. I'm not going to use a kicker. <laughs> you know, I, I, I got my strategies, man. Uh, so I'll leave him guessing. Uh, he might try to leave me guessing until the night before. So I, I've got my strategies around that. If, if where I'm looking, if I'm down a couple of points, who knows? Maybe I'll just make a move and get somebody for that uh let me stop right there. I won't give out all my strategies. <laughs> <laughs> I like, you know, I love to see it. Week one, that's a revenge battle for you, Jeff. You're going to okay. take Zach down. And if you'd like to see more of that, check out the Fantasy Football Network's Launch League, which you can vote on right now, win some prizes before the season starts. Jeff, I appreciate you coming on tonight. 
And uh, we'll chat it up in the next episode of the Fantasy Football Launch League. Appreciate you guys. Oh, I do want to say, if those that are voting for me, I'll be giving you live live updates with media (laughs) all season, baby. I'll be doing press conferences just like the real guys in the league, baby. This is real for me. So anything you want to know, send me a question on media. We'll go ahead and hold the presser and let you know everything that we're looking at doing. All right. Yes, sir. Media is the place to be. Appreciate you, Jeff. Thank you, JV. Appreciate you, man.